Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your boy Siege. I'm with my main man E. Carter, and this is Sports Entertainment and Extra She. Extra She. What's going on, brother? How's everything going with you? What's happening? What's good, man? Good to be back. You already know. Yeah, man. So, uh, I was severely under the weather last week, y'all. So that's why y'all missed us on last week, man. We would have had a great show last week. We missed the college football playoff reactions and. You know, I kind of wanted to react to that, but you know, we, we gonna just go ahead and let that pass. They probably beat everybody. Don't probably beat that to death uh, already. Uh, Glad anyway. you're feeling better, brother. Yeah, man, you already know, man. I was over here feeling like I was dead, half dead, but uh, I'm good now. As y'all can see, y'all still might see me with the allergies and doing all this like I normally do. Uh, but this cool. It's just allergies. Ain't nobody got no Rona or nothing over here. Uh, but anyway, man, I'm glad to be back. Glad to see that you're good. Uh, anything you want to say before we get rolling? Uh, now nah, let's get it. It's playoffs, baby. Playoffs. Play playoffs. Play y'all play the game. Playoffs. Man. We can right. we can do we can do football quotes all day. But man, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna dive right into it. This is gonna be a highly highly concentration of uh, or highly concentrated show about the NFL, just because it's, it was Super Wild Card Weekend. And you know how me and E get down. When it comes to the NFL, and it was just a lot that happened. We're gonna start it off by talking about the Ra Raiders versus the Bengals. Bengals got their first playoff win in 31 years. 31 years, bro. Uh, I'm gonna let you talk about that, uh, and then I'm gonna come in after you and just tell you. And and, and you can you can go and tell tell everybody first your reactions about it, and then you know if you had any key players, uh, you can go right into that too, man. Uh. Well, first, congratulations, Cincinnati. <laughs> it's, it's been 31 years. As everybody probably know, they only have four players on their active roster that was even alive <laughs> when they won their last playoff game, Barely which is crazy. Right. So, you know, so, um, so, you know, they ended that streak. Uh, but so, like I said, congratulations to them, you know. Finally getting over that hump. It had to stop at some point in time. Uh, now I got to use a different argument when I'm talking to Bengals fans because, you know, for a while, I'm like, man, y'all can't win the playoff game. But, you know, it took y'all 31 years to get it, so I still got some little some little heat for y'all. But other than that, man, congratulations to them. They played a great game, man. That, that boy, uh, you know, when he balling like that, you got to call him Joe Shicey. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your that name, boy. boy. Right, that's what they've been calling Joe Shicey, boy. Like, so, hey, he was out there looking good, man. So it was a, it was definitely like they offense, man, that has a complete turnaround, man, especially within the last like two, three seasons. They end up pulling it out 19 to 26. They had got up on the Raiders early, like uh, but that was kind of the Raiders MO all season. You know what I'm saying? They they'll get down late and then have a shot at the end to, to come back or tie it up or kick a field goal to win or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes when you play that type of game, man, this can't, you know, it don't always fall your way. So, uh, but they played a good game, man. Uh, they, uh, Carr was trying to, trying to get it done. And I think he was rushing a lot of stuff, especially in that, uh, that last drive, that last drive was a couple of plays where it, if you would have just took a breath, you know what I'm saying, take a step back and be like, okay, boom, you know what I'm saying, you could have changed the game, could have tied it up, you know, could have had an actual shot at winning towards the end, but I think he just kind of rushed a little bit of stuff at the end. As far as player of the game, man, Jamar Chase, between Joe Shacey and that whole little duo right there is crazy. So he was out there getting it in. So that's basically my take on that game, for real, for real. Yeah, first off, I got to say congratulations to them, too. I know how I feel to be a fan of a team that, you know, you don't even make sniff the playoffs. They had the fortune. We're going to the playoffs for a while. It just didn't win a game. They finally got a legit quarterback. I mean, they had Carson Palmer. He was legit. But this dude right here, to me, is, is on a different level or will be on a different level if he continue to progress on where he is. But we can talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, my main takeaway is when they jumped on their heads early, the Raiders lost their secret weapon. They're not really a secret, but it's Josh Jacobs. I thought if they could run the ball, continue to run the ball through this game, 
at least force at least force Cincinnati to make to think it was honest, you know what I mean? That mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, that they would be able to be able to climb back into the game. And f- 54 passes for Derek Carr, that's just a little bit too much for me. Uh not that you haven't seen quarterbacks throw that much before and win, but when they when they when they jumped on their heads, man, they couldn't do nothing but throw it. I mean, Josh Jacobs averaged six point four yards, I think, per carry. So I'm thinking, you know, you would think like, oh, well, they, you know, he ran, he ran well. They would keep running it, but you can't really run well or continue to run when they put ten on your head before you even, you know, before you even wake up. You know what I mean? So right. So I thought that was a big telling factor um, in terms of Cincinnati just jumping out to to a nice little lead. Um. The other thing I, I would go back and say about Joe, Joe Burrow is, is that that's the difference between a quarterback who can make decisive throws. Like he threw one to the tight end in the end zone, and it was the only place he could throw it. Otherwise, it was either batted or it was picked. And I'm like, oh, okay, so that's that's what quarterbacks do. Like you know what I mean? Like that's what a, that's what a franchise quarterback is supposed to do. Step in, make the quick read, throw it to only where your receiver can get it, and the tight end just fell in the end zone touchdown. Like those type of catches or those type of throws are what elite quarterbacks do, and I think that's why he's going. He, he's eventually going to separate himself in the league, top ten, top top five, top ten eventually, or top ten, top five eventually. Um, so that's that. Jamar Chase is the real deal. I say we you know we've been talking about that all year. Uh, and the reason why is because the reason why is because so I'm in several sports groups and a lot of Cincinnati fans are in there and they at the beginning of the year when the preseason started and you know OTAs and all that he was dropping a lot of balls so it really looked like he was about to be trash that's what it looked like it looked like he was about to be trash and then he came out and really took the league over as far as rookies and, and it's hard to say it's hard to say that we've seen a handful of rookies come in at the wide receiver spot that's better than him. Now, that's another debate for another day. But, man, this dude is a beast. He's a beast, man. I don't know what else to say about him. Um, he just beat out his uh, his ex-teammate for the rookie receiving record because Justin Jefferson mm-hmm. did it the year before. Yep. So. so he did that. And then the other thing I got to say, too, is, is – we got to give the Raiders a little bit of credit to them. The re- reason why I say we got to give them a little bit of credit because after everything they went through this season, they still made the dance. So I got to bring that mm-hmm. up, bring that up, and let them and, and just let everybody know that you know what I'm saying they persevered through what they went through and they still made the dance and they still had a shot. Now Derek Carr made a bonehead throw at the end of the game, just trying to make a play. Um, got it picked. It happens. You know what I'm saying, but. After everything they've been through to still make the dance, I thought that was pretty impressive. Uh, so all that's all I got. Social media fans, oh, go all my social media fans, man, you know, Coach Thirty, <laughs> not really an <laughs> athlete. I'm gonna piss down my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up at the end, you know. I just want to go home. <laughs> all right, I like, can just get out of here. But uh, but we we you know we got a couple little entertaining facts. Uh, and we'll talk about Mike Mayock and all that later, too. I know y'all probably weren't wondering about that. We'll get to that later. But uh, moving along, Patriots versus Bills. Now, this one right here was a little bit of a shocker. Normally, we do surprising wins and losses. This would have been surprising. Not the outcome of the game, but the actual score of the game. Like, Patriots defense, I've been saying all year is legit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, they are mm-hmm. legit. They playing ball. They ball it. They doing this. They doing that. And to get beat like how they got beat, I just thought that was a little bit of an expose. <laughs> Maybe it was just a bad day for them. But what you think about that, man? Uh, basically, I was gonna say the same thing, man. Like, I didn't see it going. What was it? Uh, forty-seven to seventeen. Like, I did not. I thought it was gonna be a tighter game. I, I at least thought it was gonna be like maybe a seven to ten point type of win. You know what I mean? Because the last couple of weeks, they played twice. So, and I think they both went one-on-one. I think the Bills got one, and then the Patriots got the next one, and then you meet up again and on wild card. So, it's like, if anybody knows, you know what I'm saying? Y'all should know each other by the back of y'all hand. Y'all literally just, within the last month, then played three times and had three meetings. But, 
Uh, that boy Josh Allen, bro, one of those quarterbacks, young quarterbacks that is not to be played with. So speaking of, uh, like you said about Joe Burrow with that, with that one pass on the when he was going towards the sideline to the back of the end zone to the tight end, mm-hmm. Josh Allen said, "You know what? I seen that. I seen you make that play. You know what? I'm a, I'm gonna do one better. Same same situation. I'm gonna roll out to the right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna lob it up, man, so my tight end can go into go uh, get a good grab in the back of the end zone, two feet in. That was like <laughs> no controversy." The funny thing is, and my bad to cut you off, is Ida wasn't even talking about that play, which well, that was an amazing play by both quarterbacks. Joe Burrow specifically, because they thought he went out of bounds at first, but he didn't. He was clear. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the throw he made in the first quarter where he steps back oh. in the pocket, takes two steps, and throws a laser in laser. between three okay, defenders. See, I'm talking about that one. I was like, okay. that throw is amazing. I mean, both throws are amazing. But but that's how, that's how you parcel or parse Good quarterbacks and great quarterbacks, man. It's like, all right, this dude made this throw. That was amazing. But I ain't even talking about the hi- highlight throw. I'm talking about the throw <laughs> in the first quarter where he just threw it. I'm like, how did he get it there? But anyway, go ahead, man. I just wanted to clarify that one. But, yeah. But, yeah, they, you know, so he did that pass. And then it's just like he can't – you can just tell with his style of play and the way the – and the Bills was at home. So I just the way they came in was like, hey, listen – we didn't come here to play with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a playoff game. We're going to try to get y'all out the way. We moving on. Next round. Let's go. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was throwing the ball everywhere. It was like negative six degrees, or seven, eight mile an hour winds. They throwing the ball. <laughs> they throwing dimes all over, all over the field. Man, he running over them like they babies. It was crazy. It was wild, man. So... I, and that was one of those games I started watching because I was kind of looking forward to it. I thought it was going to be, like I said, a closer game. Uh, but once it started getting out of hand, I was like, all right. Like, and just a little tidbit, Josh Allen is the first quarterback in Buffalo history with five touchdown passes and zero picks in a playoff game. So. No, we, we're going to put up the – bring that into the camera. When, when somebody say first, we got a first quarterback. Right. <laughs> first quarterback, bro. Like, like I said, in Buffalo, in Buffalo history. So yeah, not ever yeah. nothing, but in Buffalo history. Yeah, but Buffalo had a pretty great one. <laughs> he had a pretty great one. They had a pretty great one. He made four Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's uh, that's to be said. That's to say it's something. I'm a, I, I don't even like to be super duper stat heavy all the time, but we just got to put this in perspective. Josh Allen had a QBR of 98.5 out of 100. He threw 13 to 7, mm. or not 13 to 17, 21 to 25. That's 80, 84% completion percentage. He had 308 passing yards, five touchdowns. So he only he only missed four passes. His quarterback rating, not the QBR, the QBR is 98.5 out of 100. The quarterback rating is 157.6. The highest you can get is 158.3. Like, what else did he have to do? You know? Right. <laughs> like, he had to complete all his passes to get 100 in 158.3. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how great of a performance that was. Uh, I just had to put that in perspective. I was I had to statue out of death on that one, y'all. My bad. But uh, <laughs> but I, that was just impossible, impossibly great performance. And again, and again, <clears throat> people can say, oh, well, New England wasn't who we thought they was this season. And I would I would come back at you with this. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. They had a legit defense. It wasn't the greatest defense of all time. No. But throughout the season, they consistently put up put up great performances against teams that you would think are better than them. Like, okay, this team is better than better than their defense. And New England consistently showed that they had a, a, a good enough defense to contend. And in this game. Josh Allen made them look like babies. Uh, so I, I'm going to just put that out there. And I, I'm not even going to – I statted y'all to death with Josh Allen. I'm not going to statue y'all to death with none of their players. Uh, just five touchdowns, 308 yards, 84.6 for quarterback rating – or QBR, 157.6 for quarterback rating. And that's all I got to say for that game. Uh, he dotted – red dotted y'all. Uh, so, yeah. New, New England, 
I, I I I don't know you know what what was up with them. I just think they just got outmatched that game. So I'm not gonna statue to death with them either. Josh Allen was all y'all needed to hear on that one. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm moving along. This one right here, boy. I already know what you're gonna say about this one. Eagles versus Buccaneers. Now we into the Sunday game. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, man. I know this is the C the C podcast, man. Sports entertainment. And extra, you know what I'm saying? But that was really the only playoff game that I really didn't watch. Like, I just looked at highlights and just looked at the score. So Saturday night, you know, we watching the game Saturday night. Games go off. We chilling, you know, all of that good stuff on the Saturday evening. And it's like, oh, okay, let me see what tomorrow's lineup is for the game. I see the first game, Bucks and the Eagles. I'm like... Okay, like if the Eagles shock the world, then okay. But I really don't see that happening. Like they they snuck in, you know what I'm saying? They let the back door open and they slid in. I really don't see them putting up too much of a fight. So I'm like, well, that's the first game. That come on at one o'clock. If I pop up and you know get to moving around early to catch it and cool, but I'm not really gonna worry about it. So. By the time I end up actually getting up and moving around uh, Sunday afternoon, it was like halftime. I checked the score. At that time, it was like 17 donut. I'm like, bro, that's kind of what everybody – well, at least I expected. But I'm not an Eagles fan. You know, some Eagles fans probably expected to go in there and shock the world. (laughs) But I didn't see that coming, man. They ended up losing 31 to 15. Sound about right. You know what I'm saying? Sound about right. But like I said, we're not going to, like C said, we're not going to stat y'all to death. But I got another tidbit, you know. Mike Evans, first player in Tampa Bay history with 100 plus, 100 plus uh, reception yards and one plus reception touchdown in the playoff game. So history still being made, man. Congratulations to the Bucks. We kind of knew that was going to happen, hopefully. The next round, it kind of ups the ante on our, on them to see what they going, what they really going to do. But what about you? What's your take? You took the Mike Evans ones right out of my mouth, but I'm going to add to that. I ain't going to say the same thing you just said, but I'm going to add to it. Tom Brady had 271 passing yards. Mike Evans had 117 of them babies. 117 had 13 yards of reception. Every time he caught the ball, it was first down plus three. Like, mm-hmm. when you have them type of performances, you got to call them out. He balled out. He balled out. So uh, that was that. The other takeaway I got to say is, is that all I heard all week was how Philly is going to have to be able to run the ball because they're the number one rushing offense. The rushing leader in the game was Keyshawn Vaughn. He had 53 yards. That's all I got to say right there. It wasn't a Philadelphia Eagle that led it. So they rushing game completely got shut down. Um we already knew they was overmatched or, you know, it seemed to be – they seemed to be overmatched. The other thing that I saw, too, is is that Devontae Smith didn't even get targeted like that, I don't believe. Just watching the game, you know, from my eyes, I didn't really see much of his involvement in the game. But, again, again, all I heard was about how they were the number one rushing offense and that they were going to run the ball and try to establish the run and they couldn't get it established. And that's, and that's basically the telltale of why, you know, what happened, what happened, happened. Um, they just were overmatched and that's it. But Mike Evans, 117 yards out of uh, Tom Brady's 271. There's need nothing else to add there. He, he balled out and rock a baby them too. So, uh, <laughs> so that's that right there. Um, I don't know, man. Just uh, you got, uh, yeah, uh, yep. Uh, S. Dot Foster, man. Uh, that's what's up. He just uh, posted on here. You got to be able to run the ball in the playoffs. Uh, we appreciate the comment, my brother. Yes, you definitely have to be able to run the ball, and they were supposed to be number one. <laughs> so that comment was right on time, my brother. Uh, got to be able to run that rock. Can't run the rock, especially when you are a running team. It's, it's over with. And, and another thing too. Um, that I didn't mention with uh, a previ- the previous games when, I, when I were talking about Josh Jacobs and having 6.4 yards of carry and him uh, not being able to run ball. Time management. If you get the, if you get it put on your head early, you know what I'm saying, and you behind. We, you we about I mean? to talk about that. <laughs> you about to talk, definitely talk about time it's management. 
Oh, yeah, time management is, is definitely about to be a big topic uh, upcoming here, but we're going to move we gonna move forward uh, with the next game. The next game was the uh, Steelers and Chiefs. Steelers and Chiefs. This one, man, I don't know, man. I, I, I'll let you start with this one. This one was just weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great Sunday, you know. Everybody know <laughs> I'm a Ravens fan. I don't care. Um, some people be like, you know what? But they're an AFC North team. You should still root for them. No, I'm not. Whatever. <laughs> I'm biased. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Get Big Ben on out of there. But what I will say before I give her a little rant and stuff like that is, congratulations, Big Ben, man. You had one hell of a career. Uh, I will, you know, keep everything good and true. Glad I don't got to face you no more. Get up out of there. You know what I mean? But he had a good career. He tried to go out with a bang. Um, kind of seen this one coming, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Pittsburgh made the playoffs at, what, 7, 8, and 1? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there was one of them teams that kind of slid in, too. It's like, y'all not really built for the playoffs right now. Y'all got there. You know what I'm saying? Which a lot of teams, we didn't make it. So it is what it is. But, um, but you know, you can kind of – you're just looking at the team and it's like, uh, this don't seem – this don't have one of those fields to where they can come in and make a run. You know what I'm saying? You got Big Ben. He he already said that this is going to be his last season. Um, you know, as far as just the player he used to be, you can already see that declining. You know what I'm saying? So offense wasn't clicking. You got a nice young running back, but – it's the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? So I think uh, the Chiefs' defense is definitely better than how they started the season. Uh, Pat Money was doing Pat Money things. Uh, and But what I, the biggest shocker for it to be Big Ben's last, last ride or last rodeo, last game, whatever you want to call it, it was a lot of drop passes. <laughs> it's like a lot of drop passes, and I'm like, Man, this, if anything, this is the game you're supposed to go all out for your man. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One-handers, falling down, whatever the case may be. Like, even though you know you might, and then they let him go out with a bank how he was supposed to go out. Because I'm like, man, once they hit the fourth quarter, I'm like, Dick, you know the game is over. You know you're going to lose at this point. There's no way y'all can come back. Y'all better not run the ball. It's like, throw Throw the ball until he can't <laughs> till he can't throw that mug no more. So and that's definitely what they did. They tried to get him one more touchdown at the end, but uh overall it was, for me it was expected. I'm glad the Chiefs went ahead and got it over with. You know what I'm saying? They ain't keep them going, them guys around for no classic last minute big Ben heroics. So <laughs> overall I'm satisfied. Overall, I'm satisfied. <laughs> which, which, was entire, which was entirely possible. Like, you know what I'm saying? With the stories, you'd be like, oh, my God, they about to let them back in and do something. But they didn't let them back in and do that. <laughs> uh, which is which is, which is is thankful. Uh, Big Ben had a decent performance, though, I will say. He had uh, 215 yards and then two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Yeah, two mm-hmm. touchdowns, 215 yards. Man, I can't believe I remember that one. Um, my, my main takeaways, again, is like uh, – uh, as I put it in the comments a little bit earlier, is again running the ball. Najee Harris had 29 yards on 12 carries. Snell had two two carries for 15 yards, and that's just not going not gonna to get it done. Com- contra- or Conversely, uh, McKinnon had 12 uh, rushes for 61 yards. And you you always bring up this point, and sometimes we go, we go back and forth when we talk about this. Uh, we talk about, like, when you run in the ball. Like, some games it's like you run the ball, you don't get as many yards. Well, where you're running the ball at. And that was Kansas City with McKinnon. When they ran mm-hmm. the ball, it was like McKinnon is to me, okay, I'm gonna just put this out there. I'm not a huge McKinnon guy. You know what I mean? Like I I look at him and I'm like, okay, like he's he's a player. I I don't like to disrespect NFL players and say, oh, they trash or nothing like that, because they made it to the league. But at NFL standards, to me, he's not a top tier running back or even a top 10 running back talent. But when he was getting the ball and where he was getting the ball, it was like, all right, he got a first down right here. Okay, he got a little first down right here. Caught the ball up the backfield and got a first down right here. It was like he was making 
little small plays that added up in the end to you know first downs or keeping the clock running. Um, the other thing I'll say about this game too is is Patrick Mahomes was making some throws that I, I was just like, what are you doing? Like this is not going to last. You know what I mean? Long term jump throws across the body all the way across the field. One of them. I mean, it, it hit his dude's hands, but it, it, if if you're looking at a it's not that you're not gonna be able to do that in all of the rounds of the playoffs. You know what I mean? Jump throwing across the body to the other side of the field. But once he got cooking and they they wouldn't make any pay. When they wouldn't make any pay for making those throws, he made them pay. Like he threw a, a, a underhand, short underhand pass for a touchdown. I'm like, it's over. Once he started doing that, he in his bag. It's over with. <laughs> you can't let him get in that. You can't let him get in that bag. Um the other thing I'll say is, is another one of those performances. We got to bring this up. We got to bring this up. Travis Kelsey. That's what I was about to say that, sir. He was rocking. Yeah, he rocking, uh, rocking by baby, though. <laughs> so that's what we're going to call it on this show. Rock a Bob. Rock rock him to sleep. Uh, McKinnon had right. a, a great receiving performance, too. That's why I said, like, some of his plays, some of his plays were. Uh, some of his receiving plays out of the backfield he was catching the ball and moving and moving a different side, motion into different sides and catching short passes here and there because he ended up with 81 uh receiving yards. But um, yeah, man, I, they, they just it, it was a nice performance with them spreading the ball. But I think once they let Patrick Mahomes get in his bag, he just he turned on his superstar X factor, if you will. <laughs> and let them have it. <laughs> let them have it. And then so did Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey turned. He only had five receptions. So uh, 100, 100, 108 yards off for five receptions. Like, yeah, yeah, he rocked y'all a bit. But I uh, would. Yeah, and he's also the. He also the first player in NFL history with a passing touchdown and a touchdown reception and a hundred plus uh, plus yards in the playoff game. So he threw one. <laughs> he caught one. And like C's just mentioned, five five receptions for 100-plus and a playoff game. So it's a lot of firsts going down on Super Wild Card weekend. A lot of firsts going down. And then we got to get a big man credit. Big man caught him one. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So get a big man credit. Got him one in there. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the hefty guys. It's nice to see him get one and make the game a little bit more fun. Now. We talked about yeah. time management, man. We talked about time management. I know we're definitely going to mention it in this game, and I don't know if this is going to be controversial or not. We didn't really discuss this beforehand. But uh, 49ers at the Cowboys. I know y'all been waiting on this one. <laughs> this, this was another one of them games, bro. Like, I was just like, what is going on? It kind of went exactly how I thought it was going to go, though, if I'm being honest with you. Like, Jimmy G – team seemed to get up early and then he just I don't know man he like a bad stock like he'd go up real fast and then once everybody figure out what's going on with him he plummet like, like I don't know I don't know like it looked good it seemed good and then he started going downhill and uh so I knew that was gonna happen like you know what I said they was gonna go up and then I didn't know how far they would be up you know what type of cushion they would have but then they got the cushion and then he started playing bad football. And then Dallas, you know what I'm saying? They got back into it and you know did they Dallas thing. But that was that's that's my initial takeaway is Dallas did they Dallas thing and Jimmy G started doing his Jimmy G thing. <laughs> what you gotta say about that? Uh yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna agree with you on that. Like I I really didn't know which way this game was gonna go because I didn't know which team was gonna show up. You know what I mean? Because the Niners had some games to where they look amazing, you know. Defense look great. Offense moving the ball. They might hit a couple of little, little pauses or little stints in the game, but overall, they did have some games where they look amazing, and then they have some games to where they look a little average, you know what I mean, or below average. But so they came out hot, man. Defense did their game. Uh, they had a great game plan, especially in the first half. Uh, I think what. First three drives, I think Dallas had like negative 20 some odd yards in offense. You know what I'm saying? It was one drive that had negative 13. And then I think the the drive right after that, they had like 28 yards. And then basically, man, the defense was on their head early. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't turn all of those 
in the touchdowns. You know, a couple of them was field goals. They got up. But like you said, in the playoffs, man, it's – it's in any football game, it's always good to go up. You know what I'm saying? Especially early. But especially in the playoffs, if you can get up and have uh, a two-touchdown lead or, you know what I mean, 10-point lead, whatever the case may be, to a two-score lead, rather, then it's always more beneficial because – even if you're just playing average defense, you know what I'm saying? You still got that. You know what I mean? You can still run the ball. You can still throw the ball. As long as you're keeping that clock moving and you're staying, you know what I'm saying, ahead of the chains. Uh, so, like we said, clock management towards the end of that game. Dak Prescott should know better, for one. You take off, you slide, because that was terrible defense at the end of the game. <laughs> and I'm watching it, and I'm like, they about to let him score. If they play it right, they about to let him score. Ran out of time. You know you got, You know the ref got to touch the ball. That he tried to place, give it to his center. Huh, put this ball wherever you want to put it at. Forget what the ref is talking about, and we're going to hike it. And then the thing is, it's like they in the way, so the ref had to, one, I'm still mad at the ref. I'm still mad at the ref. I'm mad at the ref because he was 30 yards behind the play. I'm not mad at the ref, and I'll tell you why when you get done. But, you know, that's the only reason why I'm mad at the ref because he he 30 yards back, like the play going in front of him. It's like it felt like to me he was watching. It was like, oh, sh- that's me. Uh, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Got to touch it. Uh. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's still the rules of the game. But that's the only reason why I'm mad about it is just because I'm like, man, if you would have been a part of the play and on the ball, then maybe they get that that quick little spike. <clears throat> but that's all I got, man. Time management was terrible. Yeah, it was pretty. That was pretty bad. Uh, that was pretty. Time management was pretty bad. I got a couple different uh, comments. I'm gonna comment directly about what you're talking about before I actually get to the game. Before we actually get to the game part. Um, but in terms of the ref, I can't be mad at the ref for two reasons. The ref traditionally used to be on the other side of the ball, so he would have been with the play had the rule not changed how many ever years ago. Then they moved the umpire behind the offense. And and to be real with you, bro, like let's just say if the ref was on top of the ball, like if he could track, make all that speed up behind Dak and be with him. I'm looking at Dak like you trash, bro. Like, you straight garbage, bro. If, if this ref catch you, my G, like, if this ref catch you and can clock the and can touch the ball and clock it, bro, you tr- you, 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 your ability is not there, bro. You cannot run, bro. Like, there's no way that a referee that starts 10, 10 yards behind the ball and then you run 30 yards up the field and slide, the ref shouldn't be able to catch you. That's number one. If he catch you, you in the wrong league, my guy. <laughs> That's number one. Or right, that's number two, because the rule changed. Because the the ref, if you remember, the ump used to be behind the defense. Mm-hmm. Then they moved them to be behind the uh, ten yards behind, or five or ten yards behind the offense. So he already had a disadvantage. Then the secondly is if if you are an NFL quarterback, especially now, and that ref, fifty plus year old ref, can catch you, then you got to do some reevaluating on your running abilities, my guy. I mean, but, it, but the thing is, he didn't catch him. If he had caught him. He would have had enough time to hand him the ball. I get know, but it he down. But I'm, my question, my, what I'm saying is, is how is he supposed to catch him? He already ten yards oh, behind man. him. He already ten yards behind him. And then Dak is an athlete. Like Dak is an athlete. Right. Like Dak, Dak is got a ten yard head start on you. Of course, he should be thirty yards down the field. Right. But it's I would have tossed it to him. It's completely on Dak and Mike McCarthy. Like, why would you yeah, take yeah. an extra? Why would you take the extra yards first off? Like, why would you be like, I'm past the line. As soon as I get to the first down marker, I'm sliding, my guy. I'm sliding, first down marker. Where the ref? Where the ref? Boom, throwing them, throwing them the ball. Then here's the other thing. Mike McCarthy said in his interview, and, and I, this is not a direct quote, but it's close as we're going to get, damn near. Uh, you know, I don't have the rights to play it. But he said, um, he said, they practice that. How, Sway? 
So you basically telling him to hand it to the center. You pray you that's bad. That's bad, bro. Like you saying, let's practice yeah. this in case we get a last ditch effort. So Dak is literally practicing handing the ball to the center. So of course he's gonna hand the ball to Which the center. So it's bad coaching and it's it is bad play because you should know that the ref, the ump gotta touch the ball. <laughs> Like, gotta you gotta touch the ball. Like, you a coach. Like, if you've seen Tom Brady, bro, after a quarterback sneak or something, first thing he do is turn, turn around ref. and throw it. Throw it. Oh, here. Ref, hurry up. Boom, boom. Set it down. So, I'm like, but yeah, right, not, even, get it. not even that the fact that he didn't get a ball to the ref. It's like, you trying to go so fast, the ref had to squeeze in the line. Like, No. You want him to get there as soon as possible. Boom, you slide, pop up. So, ah, for, I'm a quarterback. Ref, hurry your ass up. <laughs> here, like, let like, him I'm, through. I'm going to go get you and carry you, run up to the thing and carry yeah. you if I got to. Like, but but, but that I was still my think that about, before it even got to that point, before it even got to that point, the clock management was still bad. You didn't have any timeouts. You really wasn't trying to get out of bounds too much. And then that last play before, you run down the middle of the field. Yeah, no one that's you, of, like. We got to think mm. about this, too. We got to think about this, too, bro. We ain't even get here yet. These dudes on the Dallas Cowboy defense, man. And I, I, I know Randy Gregory had one of them or two of one or two of them. Um, I can't think of his name right now. I can't think of his name right now. Had a defensive hole in penalty, and then a, a defensive lineman had an illegal hand to the face. I, I can't remember their names right now, or whatever. But I um, jotted down notes. I'm like, one penalty, two penalty, three penalties. Without oh, those yeah. penalties, without those penalties, and and them moving, moving the ball, you know, first down, first down, first down from penalties. You have a minute and thirty something seconds left on the clock where you could, where you could potentially drive down and let Dak do what Dak does best which is fourth quarter drives because clearly in the first half he wasn't doing anything. And then Joey Bosa went out and Werner went out. You know what I mean? And the pass rush let up a little bit. So he had an opportunity, man. It was just a whole bunch of bonehead stuff going on. And to me, that's just a, that's just what they banner, banner it means to me now. Like, all right, you know, just like, you know, Cleveland. When people see Cleveland Browns, they be like, oh, when we do stuff, they be like, oh, it's the same old Cleveland. And to me, same old Cowboys. It's like wherever you think they about to get, wherever you think they about to go, right before they get there, they blow a tire. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And they blew a tire. Yeah, that but, def them defensive penalties, man, killed them. Killed them. But I think all they had penalties all the way around. So, because it was a couple times they'd get down there, two penalties. They had like, what? I think it was one, one drive. They had like five holding calls on the drive. Like, the two false starts. Yeah. Sick. yeah. yeah. Two, two false, false starts and then like back another back. holding penalty. Yeah. Like you so can't win, you can't bad. win the playoffs like that. Yeah, and then then so we're gonna we gonna even skip that part and then we're gonna move to the 49ers part too, because we gotta give them some credit, you know what I'm saying? Some particular players some credit. And I'm gonna just put this out there. If we talking about players that mean the most to their teams, players that mean one player that means the most to their team is Debo Samuel. Like Debo. Debo Samuel, man, is an animal. Like, how can, we can we can even say we can even say this. Kyle Shanahan, his running his rushing offense is on the next level. We can, that's what it, that's what it that way. <laughs> it's on the next level, and the fact that Debo Samuel can help execute it and do what he can do from the wide receiver position or the backfield, and and I got to give brother Buddy some credit, bro, because for the last few years he's been saying. Put Debo at running back. And I'm like, don't put him at running back. He's like, but we can use, he like, but we can use him in the running game. He's been saying this for several years now. Yeah. Since they got Debo, like, man, they need to put him back there. And hey, he was proven right, man. So I gotta I had to bring that up. Shout out to my brother, man. He uh, he was definitely <laughs> on the nose. He was on the he been on the nose with that one. Like, as soon as they start doing it, our Russian office is gonna go to the next level. Next level. Um so I got to put that out there. Then Joey Bosa went out, like I said, and Werner went out, and that uh, allowed that also allowed uh, the Cowboys to get back into the game. My other anecdote is: is where was Zeke at? Like, was he there? 
<laughs> I mean, I'm being facetious, bro. I'm being facetious. Like, ah, hey, running game is just not what it used to be. It, they they paying all these people all this money, and they they just I don't know, man. Forget the Cowboys, man. They did they regular Cowboy things. Like I said, wherever you think you about to go on the Cowboy road or the Cowboy train or bus, as soon as you about to get there, they blow a tire. So, uh, yeah, that's that, man. Yeah. But uh, Jimmy G ain't the guy either. So I'm gonna leave it leave it off at that. Yeah. <laughs> moving, <laughs> on, moving along, man. And this is the last game, uh, which is the one that played they played yesterday or last night is uh, Arizona Cardinals versus the Los Angeles Rams. And I'm just going to say this out the gate. I told you. <laughs> I told you, bro. It's I told you. Man. I told you Stafford was going to get them in there and do his little Staffordish thing. <laughs> hey, he ain't even do much. He had 202 yards, but he still did his thing. <laughs> Hey, you sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm laughing, bro. I'm not, I'm, not. I'm not. I'm laughing, bro, because you do not like Stafford, bro. <laughs> I just think I it's hilarious. Bro. I think it's hilarious. I don't, bro. A lot of people like everybody got some players, and it's usually a quarterback that they just don't like. Like, shout out to uh, you know, brother Ed. Brother Ev, who the it was uh Jake Plummer. He hated Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer. I'm like, what is wrong with Jake? He's like, bro, I don't like his sleeves, bro. Like, what? <laughs> He's like, I just don't like the dude, bro. <laughs> oh, like his sleeves, bro. He's about there looking like a kid, bro. Like, hey. Bro, I just don't like Matthew Stafford. Like, is that saying that he's not an athlete, not, that he's not a good quarterback? No, I just – he he blow, he just low-key bunged to me. But anyway – <laughs> anyway, that, bro, is the worst, that is the worst take ever. <laughs> go, go ahead. He low key buns to me, bro. He low key. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> it's just how I feel. Hey, he got his baby. first career. He got his first career uh, postseason win. You know, congratulations. As I said, but he looked, like Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, like you said about the Cowboys. Cardinals did what they've been doing the last two years too. Look good at certain times and then take a Colin Murray. The stage was too big. I cannot wait to hear Coach 30's take on that game. Not really an athlete. I'm going to just piss down my leg. Colin Murray, every trip was – like, don't get me wrong. The Rams defensive line, the front seven, they got stars all over that place. You know what I'm saying? But it was just like – the game was moving way too fast for Kyler. And I'm looking at it. I'm watching the first quarter. I'm like, okay, nice defensive struggle back and forth. Okay. But I'm like, hey, either way it go, either for the Rams or for the Cardinals, whoever gets rolling first, this can be a blowout either way. Like, it can get ugly real quick either way. And then just between the punters and the kicking game and special teams, and stupid penalties. The Cardinals, like every time I looked up, they was starting off and off on the on the five yard line. Like, whoa, you can you don't even starting off at the twenty. You know what I'm saying? Field position is killing you. They had a couple couple drives. Like they, man, I think the whole most of the first quarter, they barely had fifty yards in total offense. Like, man, drop passes. Like I said, Kyler Murray was out there running for his life. <laughs> you would have thought that he owed them some bread <laughs> and it was chasing him like uh, hey look I told you I was going to find you I want my money Kyler like he was it was some place <laughs> where he was sliding or going to the ground where he actually had a chance to like make a play like hey, bro why would you just go to the ground why don't you spin out of that and keep looking down the field like just felt like he had happy feet, man. Stage was too big for him that time, man. But you live and you learn, man. Kyler Murray is a good – he's a good quarterback. Uh, but right now I think the playoff stage was just a little bit too big for him, man, especially that one interception. He in his end zone. Uh, he was in his end zone. He tried to uh, – what happened? It looked like he was about to take the sack. But it's like you, you know you're in your end zone. So then he realized he's still up. He's trying to get out. Cuz is on his legs. He just, ah, I'm going to chuck it. Ugh. 
easiest pick six in the world. I'm like, oh, bro. I'm like, don't throw it. I'm like, just take the sack. He throws it. I'm like, oh, pick six. They're like, what? I'm like, watch. Doop, pick six. I'm like, it was crazy, man. I just think the stage was too big for us. Uh, for the Cardinals, man, they didn't have uh, – they didn't really have the firepower, man. Offense couldn't get going. Uh, defense got tired. Um, but I will say this. Uh, if anybody watched that game, uh, you know, I send my, my prayers and stuff for uh, Buda Baker, that guy. Mm-hmm. Smash. Like, but that's a, that's a different conversation. That's one thing I hate about that whole – targeting rule and stuff like that, man. It's It puts defensive players in a bad position because you don't want to get fined or penalized for trying to target. So I think you, I think just because of that penalty alone, he came out to running back a different way, put his head in the line of fire, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what happened. Because he was out before he hit the ground. So hope he's yeah. doing all right. But other than that, I ain't see it going like that. It got ugly quick. Man, listen, I ain't even going to hit you with one more. Nah, I'm going to hit you with one more. I told you, bro. But, <laughs> but yeah. here, here's the thing about uh, Kyler, man, That uh, similar to Jimmy G. So Jimmy G will have games where he'll start off and he just ascending. He's going up, you know what I mean, making making his trek up the mountain or whatever. And then at some point in time, he starts to dip. That's Kyler Murray seasons for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? He'll go on a hellified – Hair on fire, eight and no run, or whatever it is, eight and one, seven and one, seven and no, whatever it is. In the beginning of the season, you know he's coming out and he's going to ball and give you everything he got for all of those games. And then it almost seems like it's like bodily attrition or something, like where it's like, okay, now we at game 13, and I, you know, now I got to go on my decline, you know what I mean? And it's not like that he wants to. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, he doesn't want to. He's one of those quarterbacks that's like a baller. Like, it's like a it's like a handful of quarterbacks that you put in this category. And you might say, okay, well, this guy is not the best quarterback of all of the quarterbacks. He's top 10, though. But even out of those top 10 quarterbacks, you take a handful of them out and you say, this guy is a baller. Like, I would want him on my side. You know what I mean? Similar to Cam, mm-hmm. similar to Cam Newton in his prime. Um, like I said, Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes, you know what I'm saying? Lamar Jackson, people like that. You're like, these guys can ball. They just come out and they play ball and they do, you know what I'm saying? They gen- generally make great decisions with the football or with their legs or whatever. So I got to get that out the way. I'm not saying that Kyler is trash. I just think it's something like bodily attrition or something like that. Or maybe it's, or maybe it's just, or maybe it's just, you know, as he gets, more, more, um, I guess not hurt, but but it, or I guess hurt during the season because you're not injured, but you know, more hurt and there's more wear and tear on his body through the season. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's the time where the Rams front seven don't look too good, like you know, to him, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta go up against them, like, nah, I ain't with it today. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I just feel like it's the opposite of Jim, not the opposite, it's the same as Jimmy G, but on a bigger scale. It's like he gets – he starts to de- decline at certain parts later in the season, whereas Jimmy G declines at later parts in games. So um, right. that's one that's one takeaway. The other thing you mentioned was just he was running for his life and you mentioned field position. The fact that Matt Stafford had 202 yards on 17 throws means to me that – he had per- he had great field position through the game. Like if I'm looking at it mm-hmm. just straight, if I'm looking at it straight box score, like let's say I ain't even watched the game. I'm like he had 202 yards. He didn't even have a hundred yard rusher. I mean, both rushers together had a hundred over a hundred yard. Two rushers, eight yeah, and they was and they, Michelle. Yeah, and they was getting it off. Like they could not yeah. the the Cardinals could not stop the run at all. They was getting them bugs in chunks. And the crazy thing is too is is that you know what I'm saying that with the amount of carries. For them, you could say, okay, nobody had over this many carries, so 20 carries. So, you know, you, they should be relatively fresh comparatively to other teams who rushed, you know, rushed a quarterback or running back uh, more. But anyway, uh, that's another argument for another day. Uh, and the fact that Cooper Cup only has 61 yards, like that was like, okay. Like, you know what I mean? You would look at the box score and you would say, 
well, wait a minute, why didn't the Cardinals do more? And it's because of that field position you talked about. Uh, another thing that I did not mention about Dallas, but I'm going to mention here, is that the Rams made plays that they usually do that they usually would make on defense. Dallas, conversely, did not make those same plays that they would normally make, being number one with takeaways and balls floating in the air. You know what I mean? Normally, Dallas would come down with those. The Rams in their game came down with the ones they were supposed to come down with, you know what I mean? Or made the made the quarterback hurry that they should have made, or made the sack that they should have made. So, uh, and same thing with the Chiefs, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, certain teams for Wild Card Weekend made the plays that they normally are supposed to make. The easy layup plays, they made them, and I think that's the case with uh, Stafford, or not, yeah, Stafford in in, in the Rams. Uh, so I, I wanted to point that out. And then uh, that's it. That's all I got for those games uh, and that game, too. Uh, anything else you want to mention about those? Oh, yeah, and Buda Baker, man. You definitely got to uh, second your thoughts on Buda Baker. And, and to be honest with you, the next topic is entertaining topics in the NFL, moving on from our usual uh, sports conversation into the entertainment side. And I thought that was uh, nice that you brought that up and a great transition for us because – I think that targeting rule is something that can be discussed, especially when it comes to defensive players and as people who play defense, you know, on certain levels of uh, competition or whatever. We can kind of speak to it a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, You're right. yeah, like, yeah, hitting people helmet to helmet, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of tell whether or not it's egregious or, you know what I mean, if you – I mean, you can't legislate intent, but it's certain plays where you see like this, where you can say like, if he would have if, if he would have just been able to to tackle, you know what I mean, to to do a tackle how we were taught to tackle, he could have brought him down and wouldn't have necessarily been a malicious play or anything like that. Uh, we see it time yeah. and time again with running backs too. Running backs to duck their shoulders into a defender, and you know what I mean. And we got to try to get lower as a defender. You got to try to get lower than him, and it's usually not a good situation for a defender. <laughs> Trying to get lower than the low, uh, trying to get lower than the running back running at you at full speed, but um, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to bring that back up at this point. Uh, here, uh, anything else you wanted to bring up about that? Um, like I get the rule, and a lot of people in today's age is like, oh, you have to. They care more about the safety of the players. I get that, but you're still putting some of these players at a disadvantage. Man, they don't give a uh, damn, about, they don't give a damn about the safety of the players. They give a damn about the safety of their pockets. That's what they care about. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? And they, but they're going to say it's for the safety of, you know, the players. Um, but you're still put in, you're putting defenders in bad positions, especially a lot of these corners, safeties, and some of these linebackers. Because it's just, just playing the game itself, like for me, if I was, let's just say, you know, everything worked out right for me and I was playing on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I would probably be kicked out the league or one of the most fine. Cause I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, I know how to, I'm tackling the way I was raised to tackle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, you know, I get you talking about, all right, well, we went through training camp, so we got to do it like this now and all of that. Like, man, look, 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 when the game is on the line, I'm not going to think about that. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like, when you're playing, I don't care what it is. It could be football, basketball, baseball. You don't need to be thinking about outsourced stuff when you're when it comes time to make a play. That's how you get injured. You know what I'm saying? Right. If I'm running up to make a tackle, I don't need to be thinking like, oh, well, if he get low, I'm going to just do this. I'm, it's an action and a reaction. Once you, once you throw a wrinkle in between, that's how injuries happen. So right. I don't know, man. Like I said, I, do I understand the rule? Yes. Do I think it need to be looked at a little bit different? Yes. Just, just so you don't get, because you're still getting, you're still getting concussions. You know what I'm saying? It's a game of football. Like to me, I think that just comes with the territory. You're going, people are going to have helmet to helmet hits. People are, are going to have concussions. It's going to happen. Uh, I don't really see there's not a flag or a penalty out there or that they can come up with that's going to minimize that. 
You right. know what I'm saying? Because it's an action and reaction game. You know what I'm saying? So if that's the case, play ball. If you if it looks like the guy like is out here head hunting, yeah, find him. I get that. But mm. if it's just a bang bang action and reaction, it's a game of football, man. Let that rock. Yeah, you can kind of tell too. Right. You, you can kind of tell when you're watching the game too. Like, uh, I wish I can remember the the hit. I wish I can remember the hit. But it was a running back who came through the hole and he um, lowered his shoulder. And the safety comes in and lowers too, but he couldn't get low enough. And the crown of his helmet caught the chin, caught his chin, caught the running back's chin. And you know, they threw the flag, like immediately threw the flag. And I'm like, well, that right there is That's not true. spirit of the rule. Like if he tucking his shoulder, you know what I'm saying? I got the right to come in and t- I can't stand up and he's gonna run me over. Then I lose right. my contract because I didn't come in and try to make the tackle. But then you have other plays where you see, and it's like, why did he do that? He didn't even have to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or they, or sometimes they even throw the flag uh, prematurely. Like, it, it won't be a helmet to helmet. It'll just look it's just like a hard helmet. Hit. Yeah, it's a hard hit, but it looks like the helmet. It was, you know, somebody's head might get jarred back or sideways or whatever. And then they throw the flag prematurely. So I, I don't know. I think it can be looked at too. You can't really judge intent, but you can kind of tell when you're watching the games um, who's, who's, um, who's doing it, you know, or when it's done maliciously versus when it's not. But um, I wanted to bring that up because you brought that up. I thought that was a pretty good uh, topic here. Nextly, um, and these these next few are, are probably going to be, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to just switch to the next <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mayock at the Raiders, he got fired after three years. Man, I, this was a, kind of a head scratcher to me why he got fired. I mean, I know he had some uh, dissension in the ranks with, with – uh, Gruden, Gruden doing this thing and then the Antonio Brown situation. But he drafted, like, relatively well for them. I, he drafted uh, – he he was the one who drafted Josh Jacobs. He get Max Crosby in the fourth round. You know what I'm saying? He has some, he has some, some, some a lot of contributors, man. Like, I think more than half maybe his – I got to pull up the list. I remember looking at it earlier. I printed it out. I just left it on the printer. But uh, I was looking at this draft, and I'm like, Okay, Mike Mayock, you know what I'm saying? You got a couple little players on these three, <laughs> couple of players at these three years, man. So they all know it's a head scratcher to me, but I guess maybe because of this dissension that happened, he got fired. But uh, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that or not. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> when it comes to GMs and stuff like that, I always think that, man, it's probably just something deeper in the organization. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what? We. We got to move on. If we're going to move on, we're going to clean house and start over. So I'm not sure. I, I really I really don't have too much on it. Yeah, man, I wish I had that list off the what's the name. Uh, so I can – oh, you know what? Here you go. Here you go. It's some, here's some of them. Some of, some of the people he drafted was uh, Claylon Farrell, four over, fourth overall, running back, um, Josh Jacobs, like I said, Jonathan Abram, strong safety, Crosby, Fourth round pick, who's an animal, Hunter Renfro. We know who he is, scoring touchdowns the other day or yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So you, those are all contributors to a to a team who hasn't really had many contributors over the years. But anyway, so I, I wanted to give him a little bit of credit for that too. But anyway, must have been a dissension or or uh, dissension or uh, like you said, um, or like you said, something going on in the organization. Oh, shout out to Brother Yank. He threw up the fist. My brother, my brother, my brother. Appreciate you oh, for yeah. uh appreciate you for watching and uh rocking with us. Um yeah, that's all I got on Mike Mayock. Next thing I wanted to say <laughs> is uh this one I thought was hilarious, bro. When I when I thought I was like, I'm gonna bring this up probably just to piss him off. QB carousels, bro. You we know it's some QBs on here. The QBs on here that's they going home, bro. And the reason why I brought this up is because we saw a few quarterbacks in this playoffs that didn't do so well. <laughs> Jimmy G yeah. being one of them. I think Jimmy G gone. What do you think? I think he. I think he done. Uh, I think he done in forty in, in San Fran. I th- I want to say yeah because you got a uh, what's what's your boy name Trey Lance. Yep, Trey Lance. Yeah, so you got him, and it's kind of. About that time to see what he's really gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
I think it just I think it kind of depends on how the rest of these uh playoffs man go out. Cause he that next game he got that bad man across the field. It's he not playing the Cowboys, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. Could he be gone? Like I it's like I can see it 50 50, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it can go it can go either way there. Uh Carr, he ain't going nowhere. Nah, uh, he, he's not going <laughs> you got to think about like who would you replace him with? Like Jimmy G, he already got his replacement behind him, but Derek Carr, right. you're, who like who are you gonna put in his position? Unless Aaron yeah, Rodgers, gotta, is, unless Aaron Rodgers coming available again, like, but is he gonna go to the Raiders? Probably not. They talking about they going to Pittsburgh. I hope not. They ain't go to Pittsburgh. I swear. He better not go to Pittsburgh. He better not go to Pittsburgh. But anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, so Jimmy G is one of them that I think is gone. Jalen Hurts, man, he in a he in a precarious situation over there uh, in Philly because you know they like to move on from stuff real quick these these few years, these last few years. Anyway, so I think he's another one. Baker, he up against it, but I don't think that they're gonna get rid of Baker. Uh, again, not yet. Who are you going to replace him with? Um, yeah. He kind of helped us out, too, though, because if he would have played ball and got to the playoffs again this year, then we would have to pay him all that bread. Now we can kind of get him on a little prove-it-to-me deal or something like that. You know what I mean? Not like a one-year deal, but I don't know, man. He he could be hit or miss. Cause he talking about, they talking about he might want to trade if he can't get whatever he want to get. But anyway, that's why I brought that up. Uh, Dak, he stuck. <laughs> they stuck with Dak. They stuck with Zeke. Yeah. Is even worse. They even worse that they stuck with Zeke. That, that was just a dumbass contract. But anyway, uh, whatever, man. They had to pay the man. Get his money. I ain't hating on him. Get your money, boy. <laughs> right. But anyway, moving along, man. Next week predictions. I was about to say something else with it too. On some, I was about to get real childish with it, but I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to pause for everybody who listened because I was about to get real childish. All right, let's start it off. Uh, Bengals at Tennessee. They play at 430. Well, who you got? Who you got? I don't know, man, because I really uh, – I low-key want to root for the, for the Bengals. I low-key do. But then I really don't either. Like, no, bro. Like, I want to root for the Bengals just because I'm, I'm from Ohio. You know what I mean? Uh, I think I'm. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bengals, man. I'm gonna go Bengals on that. See if they can keep riding this train. See how far they can actually take it. This might be their year. You know, it's always a Cinderella team. They might be that. This one difficult for me too. It's difficult because Cincinnati is going to play. Like they're not coming in there and gonna sit down and wait for it. Tennessee to do whatever Tennessee want to do, you know what I mean? Or they they got a decent enough pass rush to where uh, to where they can cause uh, Tanny Hill some problems or whatever. Uh, the only thing that I would say about this game that's going to really push it over the edge is going to be who can run the ball better or situationally run the ball better. And I, of course, you got to get that edge to Tennessee. Like you know what I'm saying? Like all right, uh, Dan Henry back. Yeah, so you got to give it to them. The only thing I'm going to say is this. The only thing I'm going to say is this. Derrick Henry has games where he will go straight full throttle, 200 yards, you know what I mean, He 150 yards, whatever, and, and multiple touchdowns. But then he'll also have games where you'll be like, this is the game where he's going to do whatever. He's going to have yards in abundance. He's going to have three touchdowns because it's Cincinnati. And I can't really go out on a limb and say that that's what he's going to do. Uh, so so I'm gonna put that there. So I don't know. This is one of them pick them games to me. I didn't even look and see what the line was like I normally do um, to see you know what what the line is, so I can make a more educated decision on what you know Vegas might think or whatever. But I gotta, I might have to, I might have to rock with you on this one. I might have to go Cincy only because the quarterback is better. Yeah, that's I gotta go. I gotta uh, the quarterback is better. And I don't know, man. This is a rough one. I'm gonna say Tennessee, and I'm gonna say it's gonna, or not Tennessee. I'm gonna say Cincy, and I'm gonna say it's gonna be a, a kind of a close one. 
All right. Um, San Fran at Green Bay. I'm going with the bad man. Bad man. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going with the bad man. Unless you know, it's, it's something about them first rounders though. The people that get that first round by, it can it can work in your favor because you get a chance to watch all the games and actually really get prepared on who you're possibly going to play. But you can also come out flat. And I think um, just backtracking real quick, saying that notion, I think Tennessee is not used to being in that spot. You know what I'm saying? And I think Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, he's he's had the number one seed before. So he understands like he's a, he, he, you know, he's one of those elite type quarterbacks. You feel me? So I think they show up. You know, I think uh, the Packers show up. Uh, I think the 49ers. Like you said about Jimmy G, like when he's bad, like he up and down in games, you can't have one of those type of games playing playing Aaron Rodgers because he'll make you pay for it. So I think uh, I think that that, that Niners firepower kind of runs out of gas, uh, especially if they're having too many turnovers or anything like that. Uh, I say the Packers get it, at least at least two tugs. All right, well, real quick before we continue on, we got another comment. Yusra says, oh, hey, hi, guys. Hey, Yusra, thanks for tuning in to us. We appreciate it. Uh, What's that, Appreciate man? the comments. Long time no see. Right. <laughs> All right, so Green Bay and San Fran, or San Fran at Green Bay, 8-15 on Saturday. I got, I, oh, this one is another one, because if, if you get, if you get, I'm going to just skip all of the banter and put it this way. If this was the NFC Championship game, I would take San Francisco. But since it's just the Divisionals, I'm going to take Green Bay. Because <laughs> Green Bay, Green Bay, when, when they're supposed to go to the Super Bowl, they go home. Or they have been going home. But, right. then when, but in, any, in any game that they're supposed to win, especially the past few years when they've had first-round buys, they've come out firing on teams. And if Werner and especially if Nick Bosa is out, I can't see them putting enough pressure on Green Bay to um, gr- or on Green Bay to get Aaron Rodgers any type of fluster, and even when he is flustered, it's not like he's throwing a hundred picks. So uh, right. I think San- I think this is where San Fran probably has to say goodbye. And so far, we agree, which is which is uh, <laughs> weird, which is kind of weird. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we we I, I was almost about to pick Tennessee, man, but then I thought about it like. Ah, uh, that's not gonna be the. That's who, not. Who do you be. trust more? You know what I mean. Burrow, gotta say Burrow. Yeah. At this, at this point, at this point, um, Ayusha came back. She said, uh, "Let's change that. Hope all is well for you both. I don't know much about sports, but have fun. We definitely are having fun. We have fun on this show every Tuesday. I'm gonna bring another one back that's not sports, um, which I'll post something about that." Um, sometime this week later this week uh and i'll post something about that so y'all would know uh, what's going on link podcast bringing that back we'll talk about that later uh later on at the end of the show um yeah so i gotta rock with you on green mail now this one is the one that's gonna be like ah rams at go brady <laughs> i'm going rams man whatever i'm tired of seeing brady in the super bowl bro. i'm going rams off drips uh, uh man, and, I, and, right I know, and you know we always say never go against time, but I don't care, bro. I'm not. I'm going Rams because if I remember correctly, the Rams got got one up on them earlier this season. So I think if they come out and they can still play their game the way they played against the Cardinals, they got a good chance. Definitely got a good chance, and in in Tampa and. Um, Rams when they play each other is usually lower scoring or whatever, and you'll see more of a defensive battle and Tom Brady picking his spots. Uh, this one is this one is rough. Uh, this one is rough for me because my heart want to say go go with the Rams because I would like to see the Rams go so I can keep saying I told y'all about uh, Stafford with the Rams. Unfortunately, I think this is where it ends for them. I got to ride with Tampa. And the reason why I got to ride with Tampa is just it's go Brady. Like I can't say on one, I can't say Green Bay because uh, Aaron Rodgers. 
or talk about Joe Burrow being better and did pick the Rams because Matt Stafford is not better. No, nah, yeah, no, nah. your, your boy, your boy <laughs> Matt Stafford. Hey, yeah, your boy Matt Stafford. Stafford. Hey, Matt Stafford, bro. Yeah. If, you win, if Matt Stafford, if you win, I'm going to be so hype. I'm going to be hype. I'm going to be hype. So prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. But I ain't going against Tom Brady, bro. I ain't doing that. So then we got right. a part right there. We got a part right there. Uh, yeah, we got a part right there. And then they can do the situation around the thing, too, which is uh, which is awesome. But anyway, uh, and they held the Eagles to a bunch of crumb yards, and they're supposed to be the number one rushing defense or rushing offense, but whatever. Well, story, for, story, story for next weekend or next Tuesday when we get to talk about what actually happens and not pontificate. Uh, word for the day, y'all look it up. Um, <laughs> next game, right? Is is Buffalo at Kansas City. Buffalo at Kansas City to see who go to the AFC champion. I'm going Bills. <laughs> That's another heart pick. Yeah, man. Like, I'm just tired of seeing these guys keep doing it, man. I'm trying to see somebody else take get over the rings, man. And I, and I, like, I like Josh Allen. Don't get me wrong. I really don't want to see none of these other young quarterbacks get one before before Lamar get one, but it got to happen at some point in time. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> if he, he ain't in it. so And Josh Allen, man, he the way he played the other night against, like you said, a Patriots defense that is legit. The Chiefs defense is hit or miss, but they usually show up, especially in the playoffs. And I think the Bills got a good enough defense because they, they beat them earlier. Bad. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's not like it's not like it's it's a far-fetched game. Now the Chiefs turned it around since then. Like they went on what a, a seven, eight game winning streak? Yeah, they've been, like rolling, that they, they've been rolling ever since. Yeah, so it's probably gonna be a different type of game, but I I'm gonna still I'm gonna still go Bills over the Chiefs on this one. <clears throat> What's going to determine the outcome of this game to me is one, obviously, who gets ahead, and if Buffalo can keep them honest enough with the running game to allow Josh Allen to make some of those plays, you know that he made last game because he's not going to be able to make them all. But because uh, right. the Chiefs, you have to keep the Chiefs off the field, so you're going to have to run a little bit more. Uh, in my opinion, Kansas City is or. Uh, the Buffalo's also going to have to make uh, Patrick Mahomes pay for jump, throwing the ball across the field. Like you cannot, you know what I'm saying? So if he, if he, if they can make him pay on some of those, give him enough pressure to where if he jump throws it and, and it's a guy on him and they take it out of the air a couple of times, they don't even have to be four turnovers, two turnovers. Y'all don't turn the ball over, run the ball. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I'm saying all of these ifs, because if if was a fifth, we all be drunk. I don't think they're gonna be drunk. do all that. I don't think they're gonna do all of that. So I gotta I gotta give the edge on this one to Kansas City specifically because there's a lot of ifs for Buffalo in terms of if they can stop Travis Kelsey, if they can stop Patrick Mahomes, if they can make him pay, if they're gonna be able to run, you know what I'm saying? If they're gonna be able to run the ball. And the one thing that's not an if. It's Patrick Mahomes. So I got to go ride with Pat, Pat Mahomes, uh, with Kansas City beating Buffalo. Now, do I hope Buffalo can pull this out? Definitely, man. They're a long-suffering fan base like like me. So I definitely want Kansas City to go home. But I just – the AFC is weird. The AFC is weird. And I say it's weird because it's not top-heavy. You know what I mean? Like, it's not top-heavy. So, like, let's just say – Let's just, we'll even I'll even give you the facts because I was gonna give you a I was gonna give you a what if I'm gonna give you the facts. Cincinnati just won their first playoff game in 31 years. Well, we beat Cleveland, beat them twice this season. Twice. So it's not like oh uh, well y'all you told you bringing up Cleveland, but Cleveland ain't in it. I, I know we're not in it, but I'm telling you, that's how the AFC is this year. It's like you would think. You would think, looking at it, like, no, Joe Burrow and Cincinnati, man, they put it on y'all. No, we put it on them twice. We put it on them twice. You know what I'm saying? So that's the competitiveness. Our division was competitive. You know what I mean? 
just even just looking at the AFC, AFC North was competitive, but you had so many teams, double digit teams. That's like, okay, they could get in, they can get in, they can get in. Oh, well, they jockey in for position. If they win one more game, they'd be in instead of this team. These teams got a tie to get these teams in. And it's normally not the case. Normally, you could literally see like these four teams is in and don't no matter what. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And these are gonna be the top seeds. And then this seed, these teams, these three teams is gonna be fighting for the wild card. Now it was a lot of parody this year in the AFC. So I can't just say. You know, just say for the sake of saying, like, oh well, Kansas City is going to win because they're so much better. Because they're not so much better. Um, but you know, I, I wanted to bring up the parity point just to say that. Um, bring up the parity point to, to say this: this these is not easy decisions. Like, you know, we we hell, y'all had years where you and t- y'all in Tennessee was going back and forth. They beat y'all, then they beat y'all, then y'all finally came back and said, "Nah, son, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This ain't what it's about to be." Amen. In the playoffs. In the playoffs. So it's like you can't really ever tell, like you said, but uh, like you said earlier, but hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You in the tourney, you got to do tournament things uh, to win. And that's so why we watch the game. Exactly why we watch the game and why we love the game so much, uh, especially because it's win or go home But um, at, at the highest level. But uh, we both picked Cincy. We both picked Green <clears throat> Bay. You picked the Rams. I picked – uh, Tampa. Bucks. You pick Buffalo. I pick uh, Kansas City. Cool. So we got a we got a two out of two, <laughs> two for two. In here. And then next week right. we'll come back and obviously break down the games and give our uh, predictions for the championship rounds, y'all. All right, moving on from that. Next week predictions. We're gonna move on to extra sheet. sheet. I get y'all extra tea for the uh, time that I missed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, you got anything for extra shit today, my G? Uh, no, not really, man. Just want to tell everybody to be on the lookout for uh, the first class beer products that's still out there. I know I didn't, I trimmed it down, but you now you can watch it grow back. You know what I'm saying? So you know, go ahead and uh, hit me up for any details, man. They, Valentine's Day is around the corner. If you want to get your man a nice little, you know, what I'm saying basket for his beard. You feel me? So shoot, just uh, let me know, man. We'll get you a kit together and let it roll. That's oil, shampoo, refresher, spray, and uh, beard butter. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, that's pretty much all I got really going on, man. And uh, that's pretty much about it, I think. And stay looking yeah, out for the for the uh, for the morning show. We got had to take a break this week, a couple technical difficulties, but hopefully everything should be good. And I should bring that back next week. So be on the lookout for that too. Yeah, definitely look out for that. Speaking of which, I need to go ahead and put my order in because I'm out of shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely about to re-up. re-up. I'm looking like I need to re-up too, boy. But <laughs> definitely about to re-up on that. But uh, yeah, so definitely look that up. Uh, get y'all orders. Y'all can always, if y'all can't uh, get a hold of E on it, if you know, y'all can always hit us up on here. Listen, we will take orders in the comments if y'all want to place orders. Um, we'll talk. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's just on brotherhood right there. But anyway, um, yeah, so look out for the first class beer oil. Also, um, check out we we got we got uh several, several different um people who we rock with who rock with us, as y'all seen uh our brother Sean Foster, as Dot Foster um chimed in earlier. Check out his um podcast uh, network, especially on YouTube, Stolen Time Podcast Network on YouTube. Check him out. Um, he has uh, several projects that are several projects that are fantastic. Uh, you know what I mean? So and you will see him all across the page. I always share his stuff. Uh, I, I listen to everything I share. So <laughs> uh, maybe not right right away, but I always listen to everything I share because I got to support my people, and especially if it's good. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm right, check, likewise, check likewise. him out. Um, Check out JD. I can't. I don't remember his exact. I know he dropped underscores in his, but it's like was Drippy Network, something like that. Man, listen, Jamar Dean on Facebook. <laughs> Hit him up and go on his stuff. Jamar Dean on Facebook. He he got something every day, like every day he got something posted. So y'all check him. Schools Bryson TV, man. Check him out too on YouTube. Got great content for y'all as well. Um, I like to shout them out because uh, they do the same for me, and I like their content and them, them my brothers. 
uh, the link, the link podcast is coming back. The flagship podcast for the link ENT LLC is coming back. Uh, I took a year off from doing that be- for multiple reasons or whatever, but uh, we got the technical side working out. I got a couple of uh, rights and everything that we was working out to get the link back up and running. So the link podcast will be up at some point this or next week. And then we'll do them every week from there. Um, all new, all new um, scheduling. And we'll probably do audio and then you'll see video interviews on our YouTube page. Check out everything. The link ENT LLC on all of the social media platforms at the link ENT LLC on Twitter and on Facebook at the link entertainment LLC on Instagram. No. So if y'all want to check us out on Instagram, also, I know y'all getting tired of me talking here and I'm going to be done in just a second, but Curtis customs engravings. Y'all can check us out. Uh, man, I've been engraving a lot of stuff lately. bro. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. Yeah. A lot of stuff. I done did a uh, orders for keychains. I got some wedding keychains. I got to cut out. I got some, uh, uh, you know, wedding gift keychains. I got to cut out signs, um, night lights, all type of stuff. So if y'all need anything customized or I'm about to start doing, um, I cut myself off on that one, but uh, I might have started doing <laughs> uh, controllers and stuff too. So that's going to be sweet. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's going to be sweet. So if y'all want something engraved for your people, man, hit hit up uh, Curse Custom Engraving. And y'all can see that on Facebook too. I have a website for that up soon whenever when I get to it. But, <laughs> but yeah, man, we appreciate y'all for listening. Uh, appreciate y'all for checking us all out. Uh, checking us out and checking everything that we got out uh, next week. We will be back. Hopefully, you know, with all of my predictions being right. And uh, no. you know what I'm saying? Cause today was great talking about, I told you so about Stafford. Uh, so uh, I guess I can't say it next week cause I picked Brady, but whatever, whatever. I can still say it a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> but whatever, man, it's good. Hollering at you, man. Always good talking sports. Uh, Stay up on E's uh, podcast. He He's a lot better at posting um, what he does on his pages uh, on the First Class uh, podcast page. So check that out. And y'all, y'all can see everything that he does. And, of course, I'm going to share his stuff, too. So y'all going to see that on my page as well. Uh, any part and words, my brother? Uh, for all the teams that lost, I get it. It's okay. I got a nice spot next to me. I know my team didn't make it, but it don't matter. Y'all lost, and I'm talking crap to everybody who loses. <laughs> Especially if I know you're a fan. So pull up a chair. Thanks. Man, I just want to uh, – I'm going to end this off by saying y'all just be safe out here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Being sick and getting COVID and all that stuff is just real. It's not a joke. Uh, so <laughs> y'all need to stay safe, keep your family safe, be kind to people, and – uh uh, that's it, man. Leave me and my kids alone. <laughs> uh, I just had to talk some trash too before I got off here. Bro. I'll say hi to y'all if I see y'all out. I'm just playing, man. I ain't like that. I'm just playing, bro. But anyway, y'all take it easy. Y'all have a good week. Uh, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thank you for listening to Sports Entertainment and Extra Sheet. Extra Sheet. Till next time.